is Kazia. In a previous video, I introduced one of my earlier projects that I conducted with my friend slash colleague, Francois Brajat, when both of us were PhD students. So in this project, our interest was in source of individual differences within the same L1, L2 pair. As you can see here, there is a great amount of individual variation among these participants' performance. Now the question has become, what kinds of factors could lead to successful second language acquisition beyond the issues related to the influence of first language backgrounds. So in this case, why is it that participants six, seven attained relatively good English R pronunciation, whereas participants one to three were struggling language with this? In the field of second language acquisition, in my view, what factors matter? The answer for this question is, everything matters. Because there are so many studies on this topic, I'm going to give you a very much selective review from my own perspective on second language acquisition. Roughly speaking, there are four major issues that researchers have been generally concerned with. The number one, quantity of input, how much you have been practicing a target language. Number two, quality of input, not only how much, but also how you have been practicing a target language. Number three, motivation. Number four, aptitude. First, quantity of input. It's obvious that the more practice you have been engaged in, the more native-like proficiency you attain. But now I'd like you to think of this question, then how long do you think you can continue to improve your second language proficiency? So if second language learners frequently use a target language every day, their L2 abilities continue to develop for one year year of immersion, then your performance will become more stable and plateau, or three years of immersion, then more stable and plateau, or five years of immersion, then plateau, or 10 years of immersion, then plateau. So now let's take a look at the data set that I showed you earlier. Let's check how long these Japanese participants had been in Canada at the time of the project. So for example, participant one, only one month, participant two, one month, participant three, one year, participant four, seven years, participant five, eight years, participant six, nine years, participants seven now clear that how long length of immersion in Canada did affect the rate of success in their English R pronunciation and one may be wondering how about their age it is cliche that younger is better so let's take a look at when and how old they arrived in Canada participant one 27 years old participant two 21 years old participant three 30 years old participant four 25 years old participant five 27 participant six 30 years participant seven 24 what do you think age doesn't matter at least within this data set. Let me give you a quick summary of what research has shown so far. This is just overall pattern. When it comes to pronunciation accuracy, it seems that second language learners can continue to refine their phonological accuracy within the first 10 years of immersion. Then their proficiency will become more stable and plateaued. But plateau does not mean that the pronunciation proficiency is fixed or anything. Obviously, if you don't use the target language, your proficiency will decline. It's just that you don't see quick improvement any longer. That is the plateau state. But when it comes to vocabulary, grammar, and fluency, you can see yourself improving so dramatically within the first one, two years of immersion. Then you, you will see yourself being more stable afterwards. If you want to know more about this topic, here's a list of references. And in particular, if you want to study more about what I meant by pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar, and fluency, these papers will give you a very good picture of how we can measure these dimensions. But obviously in this YouTube lecture series, I'll come back to these measures. Quality of input. Even if you have being in a second language speaking environment for a while, you could also choose to speak your first language. You could always hang out with the friends and colleagues who speak, share the exact same first language background. So researchers have been also interested in how much, how intensively you have been using a target language, home, work, and social settings. And another crucial factor affecting success in second language equation is presence of explicit language learning experience. When it comes to certain linguistic structures, which entail a lot of learning different difficulty, you may need training so that you can be pushed to be more aware of the accurate and fluent use of these structures. Here is a list of references where you can learn more about the effect of instruction and awareness on the success of a second language equation. Another issue that second language equation researchers have extensively explored is the corrective feedback. Not only positive evidence, but also negative evidence is necessary. What this means is that you being exposed to target language, that's not good enough. Sometimes you need to be 
point it out, you have made errors so that you'll be pushed to notice and fix them. And here's a list of references that you can look at. And also individual differences among learners must play a very important role. And then one obvious factor is the motivation. Motivation plays an important role in second language acquisition. There's a consensus for that. Without motivation, you won't be pushed to take action. Therefore, nothing will ever happen. Motivation is the necessary, but not a sufficient condition for success for second language acquisition. But now the question has become then what type of motivation matters for success for second language acquisition. There are a bunch of theoretical frameworks of motivation related to second language acquisition. We'll come back to these issues later in our YouTube SLA lecture series. And here's the list of recent references on this topic. Aptitude. Individuals are also very different in terms of their ability, capacity to process, integrate the input that they have received. Now the question has become, what does it mean by talent? And does it mean by greater memory or better perception? We'll come back to these issues later in our YouTube lecture series. So here's a list of recent references on this topic. All the discussions and my lecture have been based on the chapter that I published in 2018. If you want to know more about the details, please come to my website. You can get a free copy of this. Here is a summary of the underlying mechanism in second language development. There are so many factors that could matter for the rate of success in second language equation at this stage. But there are roughly speaking, there are four major issues that researchers are particularly interested in. Number one is the quantity of input, how much you have been practicing our target language. Not only quantity, but also quality, how intensively you have been actually using our target language. And also when it comes to the issue of relatively difficult linguistic features, which is the necessary condition for you to become more native-like, it is very beneficial for you to receive some instruction so that you can have greater level of metalinguistic awareness of these linguistic features. And if you keep making errors that you haven't really noticed, it's also very effective to receive feedback from native speakers or more advanced second language users. And finally, if you have a greater motivation and higher level aptitude, that will also help you acquire more advanced second language proficiency. Thank you so much for watching. So in the next video, we'll continue to talk about more exciting issues related to second language education.